step up and pray with us, if you will. We're glad you're here, and we welcome each and every one of you. It's so honored and blessed tonight to have the Mathis family back visiting with us. God bless you here at both services Sunday and back tonight. Thank you so much. And then, Brother Finley, good to see you. God bless you. And he's always the way on Sunday and having to fill in. and well, not having to, but filling in for the church. So next Wednesday, he'll be preaching right here at Mountain View. Brother Bob Finley will be preaching. All right. And uh, Brother Bob, uh, your wife, my wife, they've got plenty of outlines. All right. Plenty of outlines to help you out. All right. Brother Randy, pray for us. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness. Lord, we just thank you for being good to us. We thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the precious blood you shed. Thank you for loving us enough, Lord, that you leave the splendors of heaven and come into this sin-cursed world. Lord, save us, draw us, and save us by your marvelous grace. Pay our sin debt. Give us a home in heaven. Give us eternal life. Give us a comforter to walk through this life with us. God, give us all the blessings of heaven poured out on us here. God, we just thank you for that. We thank you tonight that we have an opportunity to come together with our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ, be able to worship you, turn aside from the cares of life, Lord, and the affairs of this world, Lord, and all the things going on. Just get our mind and our hearts fixed once again on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pray that you'd help our pastor tonight. Fill him with the Holy Ghost, Lord. God, give him exactly what you'd have for us tonight, Lord. Pray that you'd move through here in great power and glory. Just take control of the service. Have your will in your way in every heart and every life, every song that's sung, every prayer that's made, every word that's said, that you might be honored and glorified. God will honor you and praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 186, the old rugged crawl, first and last. Sing it out, sing it out, everybody, sing it out. a friendly church we always have been we're going to continue by the grace of God and so we want to welcome our visitors tonight we also want to welcome one another good to see brother David I don't know that you can shake his hand but glad he came through the uh, shoulder uh, rotator rotator cuff surgery God bless you brother David being here tonight but uh, shake hands one with another greet one another some of you speak to brother Finley hadn't seen him in a while God bless you to fellowship together all right Make sure you shake hands with the visitors, okay? Give me a little bit more, Brother Philip. A little bit more right here. Brother Philip, can you give me a little bit more right here?
I thank you for fellowshipping a little bit and getting to know one another once again. Got a really good number for this Wednesday night, this time of the year, uh, with so many are, you know, vacation travel. But thank you for all for all of you being here, and may God bless you. Before I forget, uh, Miss Suzanne, is your mama still in the ICU? All right, Miss Suzanne Deal's mother in ICU. Let's remember to pray for her, okay? Blood pressure was real low, heart rate real low. So uh, continue to pray for her. Uh, still in the ICU as of the, what, Saturday maybe? Saturday? Saturday, Sunday night. So pray for her. And then Brother Ray Emery as well. Good to see you, Miss Diane. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Ray. And then also, I think it's um, Friday. Yes, Friday, Miss, Miss uh, Margaret Conard is going to have really important surgery. Uh, I think it's hip and all that, knee and hip. So uh, pray for Miss Margaret Conard, all right? That's happening Friday, the Lord willing. So remember those in prayer. And then Brother Mike Powell, they requested prayer for Brother Mike Powell the other night. Please let's remember him as well, okay? Now, um, uh, let me go ahead and announce that this Friday night, the uh, bus will be leaving the bus parking lot and going to uh, First Baptist Church of Conesty, where but Pastor Finney is the pastor, and they're in a youth meeting there. And so Brother Nathan and I are going to take the bus, and all you that would like to attend, you're more than welcome to attend, and they're going to feed you there. So they'll have refreshments there, and then I think they might even get an ice cream afterwards. So that's just a, a good night and a fun night and a church night planned for the young people. That's this Friday night. So have your children here, teenagers, uh, young adults. You're all welcome to go. And then once again, the bus will be leaving at 6 p.m., all right? And then uh, remember the uh, s'mores on Brother Landon's land. That's July 30th. Remember Super Saturday. That's August 12th on the ball field. Remember Anniversary Sunday. That's August 6th. Uh, don't know who's coming to preach. Uh, most times they're per she's pretty good, so uh, no, nah, it'll never be that. But uh, that won't happen. But anyway, anniversary Sunday is August 6th, and then a fall revival is October 4th through the 6th with Brother Justin Cooper. All these dates, you need to write them down uh, if you can and remember them. And then also, very, very important, very important, if you look at this main block right here, it's all about the online directory. And she's trying to compile that. <clears throat> She'll not be able to compile that <clears throat> unless you help and I help and everybody here helps. If you'll just read that first little block right there, tell you what to do, where to go, all the information you might want in a directory. And we don't want anybody left out. We don't want anybody left out. We want everybody to get on this online directory. We can also print it out and make copies available, okay? So all the information there is very important. You need to go home tonight, and don't tell them. You need to go home tonight and make sure you get your information to that email address, all right? Then lastly, uh, men's work night, Monday, this coming Monday, August the 24th. We're running out of time as far as school starting back. Uh, you ought to have seen the stack of new enrollments. Our sister showed me that. I'm, I'm serious. That wasn't that thick. I'm not exaggerating. Folders, the kids' folders, new, en new enrollment, that thick of a stack already so we praise the lord for that amen so uh we got some things to do over there men's work night 6 p.m be, cl be cleaning out a gym supply room uh, so we can put all the tables the rollaways the folding tables in there make that a dedicated table room so we can always have access to our tables for any special events there's a considerable amount of junk in that room that needs to be trashed so Brother Spencer's even going to look into getting the dumpsters and we'll have to haul everything away. There's just a lot of stuff accumulated through the years. It's taking up a lot of space that we don't need. So if you've got anything in there, by the way, you need to stop by school like between now and Thursday and go get your stuff out of there if you think you might want it. We're not throwing everything away, but we're going to clear it out and uh, get it so we can move all these other things. Also, there's a large desk to move and another one to go in its place. And we would appreciate your help Monday evening about 6 p.m. and it'll only take about an hour, okay? And many hands make quick work, so keep that in mind, all right? Y'all come on, sing for us. They're going to sing, and then we're going to preach the Lord willing. Keep all these announcements in mind. They're all important, all right? Jesus is my high tower, a light in the dark hour. Without him I could not see. 
Amen. You say amen to that? I believe I heard Pastor Larry Rain say one time years ago that if they'll go with us to the end, that's far enough. Amen. That is far enough. Amen. Before I preach tonight, I want to also thank the Lord for visitors that are coming to our church on a very regular basis. And I speak of Brother and Sister Wise back here on the left. Thank you all for coming. It means a lot. Appreciate you being here. Brother and Sister Medlin and all your children. God bless you. We're delighted that you come into Mountain View Baptist Church. And I want them to always know they're welcome here and uh, along with the rest of us. Amen. Take your Bibles. Go to Colossians chapter number 3, please. Remember the sign-up sheet for the, um, for the young people day on August the 12th. The sign-up sheet is down front. So keep that in mind if you will. And uh, just a lot of things happening. And I'd just like for you folks to get involved and be aware of all that is happening, okay? <clears throat> Colossians chapter number 3. I 
I'd like to start in verse number 17. Kind of go slow because I want to show you how it's laid out, right? <clears throat> verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, from this, starting verse 18 all the way down to chapter 4, verse 1, you have several individuals that are addressed. He starts with the wives. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Could I get an amen right there? That's a great verse. That's not male egotism. That's biblical principles, amen? Biblical principles for the wives. Well, if the wife has a biblical principle, don't you think the husband ought to have one? He does. Look at verse 19. Husbands, love your wives. Well, well listen to this. And be not bitter against them. Anything will hurt the marriage. Anything will spoil or ruin a relationship. It's bitterness. And bitterness comes, or let's just say it's a kissing cousin to an unforgiving spirit. You get bitterness in the church, it hurts the church. You get bitterness in a marriage, it hurts the marriage. Listen to this. You get bitterness in you, it hurts you. And many are troubled because of bitterness. Great message right there in verse number 19. Verse 20, he doesn't leave the children out, young people. Children, obey your parents in all, in this good verses right here, in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Now, look at me, folks. Did, did the Lord put an age limit right there? So am I correct in assuming that as long, and listen, this is going to get quiet, but as long as you are under your parents' roof, I would say this verse, without a doubt, applies to you. Right. Amen. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And then he doesn't stop there. Now he got another category, verse 21. Fathers, dads, provoke not your children to anger. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure my folks knew that verse. <laughs> Y'all can laugh. I don't know that my folks knew that verse. Because most of the time they was angry getting us angry. Somebody say amen. You know what I'm talking about. You sure know what I'm talking about. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. It's a very fine line right here. Lest they be discouraged. Wow. Hmm. Man, there's a lot of depth of teaching right there. A young person, a child that's discouraged. Let, let's go to the let's go to the right level. A teenager. A teenager that's discouraged. Could they could they be discouraged, Brother Dean, because their dad, not knowing and not realizing what he did, he's provoked them to anger. Does that mean that? The dad can't discipline the child. No, that doesn't mean that at all. A home without discipline is not a good home. It's not a good home. Amen. That's not what it's talking about. When you look at the terminology, it's a, it's a, it's a justifiable resentment. So well, how, how would a daddy provoke one of his children to a justifiable resentment? Well... What if you and I are correcting our children 
but they see a double standard in our life. Yep. Or I'm going to correct my children. It's going to get very quiet. I'm going to correct my children for their music, yep. but I'm not going to do a thing about my music. That's good. Thank you. You know what that's going to do to a child? He says, well, my Lord, you're beating the stuffing out of me. You're whooping me till the smoke alarm goes off. Lord, Daddy, I hear you cuss. Yep. I hear the music you listen to. Right. I see the way you talk to Mama. Yep. I know you owe 16 people in the county and you won't pay your bills. Lord, Shall I keep going? You're lazy, you're a deadbeat, your mama's got to mow the grass, you won't even do that. Don't you, do you understand now what the verse is talking about? Don't provoke your child to anger. A justifiable resentment. Let me, let me throw something else out at you. Maybe I'll just preach right here. We need the home, amen? Our homes, need, our homes don't need less preaching. They need more preaching. I don't, and I'm not throwing rocks, okay? I'm not throwing rocks. But I've studied this verse, and I've preached on it in years gone by. How, how would you provoke a child to a justifiable resentment, that anger? Well, maybe in your home you have not one child, you have two or three or four or five. And in that home, you favor one of them. And you give them everything they want. And they never are accountable. And they're never disciplined. They're the king and they know her. Or she's the queen and she knows it. Everybody knows that that's mom and daddy's pick. Okay? If that really happens, brother officer, how does that make them other three or four kids feel? He favors my brother. He favors my sister. They favor my little, my little baby brother, my little baby sister. They could care less about us. Hey, 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 fathers, fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Just lest they be discouraged. A lady come up to me, I won't tell you who. A lady come up to me the other day, just, just like three days ago. Brother Andy Jr., you know what she said? She said, why can't parenting be easy? I said, I don't know. So I didn't write the manual. It's not easy. It's not easy. It never has been easy. And could I say to every parent in the building tonight, you only have one chance at this. You only have one opportunity. They're going to be grown and gone. And what's going to be put in them is that's going to carry them through life. And I preach, I plead with this church tonight, if we're going to be biblical fathers, if we're going to be godly dads, if Brother Linton, Brother Nathan, if we're going to be the spiritual leader of our home, we need to do everything in our power, even if it's read some books, we need to make sure we don't provoke our children to anger. Because Brother John Cub, the last thing we want as a church and the last thing we want in our family and in our homes is a bunch of children that are discouraged and beat down. They're beat down. They're discouraged. They have no spirit left in them. They they have, no, they, have no, they have no social skills. They have no personality. They walk around morbid. Amen or not, I'm going to preach it, okay? They walk around morbid. They walk around like, like something's wrong with them. There's something bothering them. There's something not right about them. Not picking on them, just say something not right. Well, maybe it starts at the house. Maybe daddy's a hypocrite. Maybe mom's a hypocrite. Maybe the children see that things are preached on and taught on here at the Mountain View Baptist Church and any other church, and instead of the mom and dad doing anything about it, they just say, that's his opinion. Well, that's what he thinks about it. Don't pay him no mind. Listen, friend, you will hurt your children. The great, thank you, the greatest policy in all the world is to support the pulpit. Support the man of God. Amen. Support the man of God. Support the pulpit. Support the school. It don't matter. Now, let me just, let me just, let me just preach this right. Support authority. 
Don't buck authority. It affects kids like, like nothing that I know about. And when you buck authority, when you buck authority, you're teaching that child, even at a young age, it's okay to buck authority and to go again. And by the way, the authority that I know about is the authority that God set up. Amen. And that's the home, family, and government. Amen. And the church setting. Somebody needs to help me. God, God set all that up. Brother Finley, I've never seen it fail. I've never seen it fail. Whether the husband or the wife or both, they go against that authority. They instill that in those kids. Those kids come home one day from seventh grade, and they've got a letter. So we need to meet with you. We need you to come down here to school. We need to have a consultation. We need to have some counseling. Your son got in very big trouble today. Your son talked back. Your son, your daughter is defiant. Your daughter is, uh, is, is being out of line. Your son is out of line. And you throw up your hands and say, well, what in the world happened to him? Well, here's my message tonight to this church. What are we teaching them? Surely to God we're not putting that in them. By the way, Brother Josh, I tell you the greatest authority that there ever has been, and that's the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen. And by the way, he wants to be Lord, amen. I said he wants to be Lord. What does that mean, friend? It means he wants to be in control. He wants to run your life. He wants to direct your life. He wants to control your life. And I tell you, it's a happy day, and it's a good day, Brother Jesse. It's a wonderful day when every child of God can throw up the white towel of surrender and say, not my will, but thine be done. Not my way, but your way. Not my direction, but your direction. Not my choices, but your choices. And not my plans, Lord. Not my plans, but your plans, Lord. Not my will, oh God, not my will, but thy will be done. I want to tell you tonight, Jesus is Lord. Lord. And I tell you, our children and our grandchildren, they deserve to see a mom and a dad that knows what it means experientially to have Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life. I can teach my children, and by the way, the one that asked me, why is parenting so hard? Brother David, the, their children were little. And every one of you know what I'm talking about. When they're, when they're, this, when they're this little, they don't have only a set of angel wings. I hate to interrupt some of you's thinking. I hate to make a rude awakening to you, but that little child, uh, the Bible said, "Behold, I was shaping in sin, and I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me." That little youngin that you thought wore angel wings and a halo, they don't have any of that. They've got an Adamic nature, and listen, that Adamic nature makes them bent towards going the wrong way. Boy, and I talk about. And I love them. God knows I love them. And, and probably you've had people ask you this, why is parenting so hard, so challenging? And they're this little. What in the world, what in the world do you think is going to change when they're 14, 15, and 16? And that person doesn't think it is going to change. I tell you what, the challenge is, Brother Medlin, they, they, they don't decrease. They only are altered. It's a different set of challenges. It's different. It's different set of um, different set of social circumstances, situation. When you're talking about having teenagers in the home, and you teenagers, I love you, but some of you, you know, you you got a mind of your own. You 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 you're only you're only 15, and God God love you. You know more than your dad. And you know more than your mom. And. And you even know how to raise your brothers and sisters, and you're not even married, and you've never raised any. 
That's like, you know, the worst thing in the world is somebody that's never been married, never have kids, try to tell you how to raise kids. Uh, until you get you a tassel full or a passel full, don't say anything. Because it, it all changes when you get kids. Say amen. Listen to me, folks. God, let me just show you. Look at verse 18. Uh, here's what I did. Here's, you don't have to do this. Here's what I did. Verse 18, I, Miss Krista, I highlighted the word wives. God has something to say to the wives. In verse 19, Brother David, I, I highlighted husbands. The very first word, God has something to say to husbands. Brother Randy, in verse 20, man, you know we could preach this all night. God has something to say to the children and the young people. Obey. And then, and then, you know, you think that's enough. He said, nope, nope, let's get it all. Verse 21, he said, now I want to address, see, in verse, in verse 19, he's, he's really targeting the men as being husbands, but in verse number 21, he's targeting the men as being fathers. Let men, men, listen, man, I know you probably didn't come to church for this tonight, but, but God bless you on a Wednesday night. We need it, amen. I mean, we need it. It's important that you're the right kind of husband. And it's doubly important that you're the right kind of father. And I know where I am, and I know how old I am, and I know our family situation, and I know a lot of your family situation. It's not only important that I'm the right husband and the right father. Brother Spencer, Brother Walford, don't you think, and there's not a verse there, but don't you think if God wants the wives, the, the fathers, and the husbands right, what about us grandfathers? Right. You, know, you know, Brother David, if it wasn't for some godly grandmothers, there's no telling us where some kids would be. Right. Brother Herpel, if there wasn't for some godly grandfathers, some old wise grandfathers, didn't care about nothing in life, didn't care about the finery of life, they just cared about God and church. Give us some more of those. Give us some more of those. Break beans, that's right, break beans and get the grand youngers around and break beans, not get on social media. You're welcome, amen. I mean, just that old-timey crowd. Where is that crowd? Where is that crowd now? Bake some pies, make some cake. Come on, ladies, where, where's that crowd at? Where'd they go to? Get that granddaughter in the kitchen. Get that, well, not that grandson. You let him play, all right? You let him shoot frogs and blow up ants and put firecrackers in buildings and, you know, and, and, and uh, climb trees and fall out and use a chainsaw and a BB gun and a 22 and a, and a, and a, three, a 270 and get him, get him a bow and arrow. Let him be a boy, amen. Let him be a boy. And a fishing rod. Get, get him a fishing rod and don't, don't raise a sissy. Don't raise a sissy. Don't buy him a doll. God have mercy. Don't buy him a doll. And don't dress him to look like a girl. Oh, Lord, don't do it. Don't do it. Put them, put them, put them bloomers on him. God, the, friend, friend, this ain't England. Say amen. This ain't England. It's America. Amen, everybody. Thank God for a godly grandfather. Thank God for a godly grandmother. That if them kids need to find God, and everything might not be right at the house. Everything might not be right with mom and dad, but I tell you, they know they can go to grandma's house, and they go to grandpa's house, and there's some peace there, and there's some serenity there, and there's some love there, and there's some cohesion there, and you know what, John? There's some of the presence of God there. And they and, and watch you, hold on, and they still pray over meals there. That's right, they still pray over meals. You, some, some folks are like, you know, you go get all your groceries at Walmart, Come get them, lay them all on the table, pray over them then. That might work for you, but that ain't the way it ought to be done, amen. Receive with thanksgiving, amen. Pray over your food. Let your children see that you're trying to live a Christian life. Highlight wives, 18. Highlight husbands, 19. Highlight children, verse 20. Highlight Fathers, verse 21, but there's another category, 22, servants. Wow. Servants. You know what that's talking about. Brother Cut, that in the Bible days, 
servanthood and slavery, Miss Kristen Bloom, was very prevalent. It was very prevalent. It was, it, it, it was well known in the, in the Roman Empire, well known. Let me just say this. Throughout the then known world, slavery and servanthood was a part of life. And if you'll read your Bible close, it, Brother Josh, it's not only in Colossians, it's also talked about in Ephesians. Let's read this together since it's so interesting. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Hi, I'm going to stop a minute. Okay, now. I don't see any servants out there. I, I'm not looking at, I'm not going to call you a servant. I'm not going to call you a servant. I'm not going to call you a servant. I'm not going to call you ladies a servant. But all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this scripture can apply. Well, how does it apply? Well, we're not servants anymore, but... Most people in this building are employees. Employees. Would you agree with my? Would you agree with my take on that script? Would you agree? So let not now. Now let's read it like that. Employees. Obeying all things, your masters, your bosses, according to the flesh. Not with eye service. Don't work with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness. That means sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Be a good thing that you realize that laziness is repulsive. And laziness is a bad testimony. And, and, and I'm going to get a little plain. Dragging your feet and dragging your tail, that's a bad testimony. Very, very. If anybody ought to be known for a diligent work effort, it's a child of God. And Brother Josiah, if anybody ought to maintain a testimony on the job, it's God's children. Amen. Brother Finley, he says in verse number 23, whatsoever you do, do it heartily to the Lord, not to men. Knowing of the Lord, see how the, he brings the Lord in here, brings the Lord in verse 23, brings the Lord in verse 24. Knowing of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Working for your master, but you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. There is no respect to person. Now chapter 4, highlight again, ready? Highlight what? Masters. Bosses. Team leaders, company owners, company uh, managers, masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. With all praying for us that the God will open us the door of others, speak the mystery of Christ, uh, which I'm bastard in bonds. And then on and on you can read. So then he finally comes, chapter 4, verse 1, to master. Here's my point tonight. No categories left out. And I could preach really 20 minutes about the masters. Write this down and don't forget it. According to these verses, God doesn't divide your life into secular and sacred. He does not divide your life into secular and sacred. You know what he says, Miss Ivester? It's all sacred. Look at this is such great teaching, Brother Loving, because look, if you will, in verse 23, what should we do? As to the Lord. Verse 24, knowing that of the Lord. Verse 24, for you serve the Lord Christ. Three times, Brother Kyle, three times he's telling the servant or the employee, the employee, that your service is rendered to the company, yes. To the business, yes. To the customer, yes. But your service is also rendered to God. What you think is secular, God calls sacred. What you think is mundane, God doesn't look at it that way. What you think is a waste of time. It's just a, a waste. By the way, let me remind you, the Bible said, if a man doesn't provide for his own house, he's worse than an infidel, and he's denied the faith. Amen? So work is honorable. Work is right. Work is biblical. It's biblical. But God puts a premium on the employee-employer relationship. 
If you really want to understand your job, if you want to understand your job, you look at these verses right here. And three times, Brother Dean, it talks about to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. Although they don't know anything about the Lord. And they are anti-Christian and anti-Bible, anti-church and anti-God. That doesn't change the fact that you're God's church, you're God's servant. Doesn't change it. So basically what I've done is introduce the passage. That's what I've done tonight. I've introduced the passage. Can we recap and finish? Have you looked lately at the word for wives? Not only have you looked it, do you aspire to live it? My wife's here tonight. God bless her. It's very few times I ever try to get personal, but I would not know what, how to deal with a rebellious wife. I, I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't, I don't face that. I don't live with that. And many of you men should have been saying, hey, amen, you don't either. Pity the man. Pity the Christian husband who's got a tiger by the tail. You should have known that she wasn't going to submit when you saw that she didn't submit to her own dad. Why y'all getting so quiet? You should you better watch that. You guys that are dating. You better look beyond them blue eyes and that figure. Amen. You better look beyond all that and you better you better just silently observe. Does she submit to her dad? Does she submit to her mother? Because I'll tell you this, if she's learned not to submit to her dad and not, are you okay? Are you okay? And she's learned, Brother Tom, not to submit to her dad. What makes you think she's going to submit to you? She's going to fight you the whole way. We ain't tithing. Hush up, woman. Be quiet. Yes, we are. I ain't going. Hush your mouth. Yes, you are going. I ain't wearing that. Yes, you are. I'll spend what I please. I'll go where I want to go. I'll do what I want to with my time. You should have stayed single. <laughs> Victoria smiling. <laughs> Victoria said, I thought about it. <laughs> she did not. She did not. God, you better not have. You better not have. But man, you think that's hard. Some of you think that's hard. You're being, you're calling women out and you're being overbearing to women. You think that's hard? Let me show you hard. Let me show you hard. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And I'll remind you what Ephesians says. Husband loves your wives as Christ loved the church. Brother Tommy, watch this next word. And gave himself for a man, oh man. I'm not sure how far I've got with that. Gave himself? Gave himself for his wife? You listening, Dallas? You listening, Jenna? I'm going to pick on y'all right here, right front and center. Jenna's got to submit. Dallas has got to love. That's it. Don't turn that around. She's not the boss. You're not the boss. You're the boss. You submit. He keeps loving. And I found this out. A man that'll love his wife like he's supposed to, a wife will probably have no problem submitting. She finds it the joy of her life. Wives, husbands, children, fathers, servants, masters. What a great list. 
What a great list. I'm, I'm going to pick this up some more because I've got something to tell you about doing something with your heart. Let me whet your appetite, and I'm finished. How many of this church, now listen close, have heard of the great missionary David Livingston? You've heard of him. Raise your hand. What about everybody? When he died, does anybody know what happened to him? He took his body, Brother Stoltz, back to England to be buried in Westminster Abbey. But Miss Pam, before they took his body back to England in Westminster Abbey, the natives took their cruel tools, cruel knives, and cut his heart out of his chest. And they said, this is the quote, his body belongs to England, but his heart belongs to Africa. And they buried that man's heart, Philip, in Africa. I'm going to use that maybe when, when we get back. Most of you know I'm leaving tomorrow, right? This is my last will and testament. <laughs> no, it's not. It better not be. It better not. <laughs> it ain't. That ain't going to help one bit, is it? <laughs> that ain't gonna, if there was something, that ain't going to help. <laughs> Buried his heart in the country he loved. And sometimes we think, Brother Herpel, we can't do things heartily. Do it heartily. In other words, put your heart in it. Let me just put this in since it's a commercial, and I won't get to preach again until the following Sunday. Not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Listen, I think you ought to put your heart in your church. I believe you ought to put your heart in your church. Thank you. Thank you for listening, okay? Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. Uh, pray for us. I'm serious, and I'm not cutting up either. Uh, my wife and I are leaving tomorrow about 2.30 or 3 or something like that. We've got to be in Charlotte and fly out at 6, right at 6. I think you're supposed to get there two hours early. So uh, we've got to fly from Charlotte all the way to Seattle, and then the next morning we've got to get on a ship and go to Alaska. And we'll be gone um, seven or eight days, be back next Friday. So uh, we'll have Evangelist John Morgan. Evangelist John Morgan is going to be preaching here Sunday morning. The old mountain man. And I know you'll be here with amens. Uh, Brother Nathan Griffith will preach Sunday night. And Brother Finley will preach Wednesday night. So uh, keep all those things in mind. I hope you have great services. Pray for us. Pray for my wife. I'm going to knock her in the head before we get on the airplane like they did Mr. T. And may have to knock both of us in the head. And <laughs> knock them out and drag them on the airplane. <laughs> she said she's already getting queasy. And we're not even, we're not even got in the car yet. And she's already getting queasy. I don't blame her. Let's stand all over the building, all right? I'd love to meet with our deacons for about five minutes, all right? And if the deacons will come back and study real quick, we'll go. Let's, um, let's see. Um, Brother Tommy Kirker, can you come pray with us, please? Dismiss us. Thank you for being here tonight. Listen, go back and look at all those texts. Great verses, Brother Kirk. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the preaching we heard tonight. Thank you for the desire to come to God's house, Lord. I pray for the preacher and Miss Lynn, Lord, as they embark on their vacation, Lord. I pray that you give them travel mercies, Lord. I pray that you protect them, Lord, give them some relaxing time. But, Lord, most of all, all of us fit in one of these categories about we let the preacher preach tonight, Lord. We're husbands, we're fathers, mm. we're wives, we're servants, we're children, mm. we're masters. And I pray that we submit unto you according to your will and, and, and glory, Lord. I pray that you be with us, Lord. Bless Brother John Morgan as he, as he comes our way. I know he'll be a blessing. He always is, Lord. I pray for Brother Nathan and Brother Bob Finley, Lord, as they mount this pulpit, as they each take their time, Lord. I pray that we have open hearts and open minds during that time. Thank you for the visitors that you've uh, sent our way the last couple weeks, Lord. I continue to be a blessing to them and be friendly to them. <clears throat> we ask this all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good dance tonight.